Hi everyone, my name is Hafs with two Fs and I am going to talk about the short story Mary Ventura and the Ninth Realm, Ninth Kingdom actually, by Sylvia Plath. It's a very short story. It was written by Sylvia Plath when she was studying at the Smith College. The book is named after a childhood friend of Sylvia Plath. It was rejected by publishing companies in the beginning because it was too dark and morbid and I'm going to do like an analysis of it because it's full and covered of symbolisms. A lot of like things and uh, like metaphors and analogies and so everything has like a dark meaning uh, behind it and so because of that it's going to have like a lot of spoilers of course and so the book starts uh, with Mary Ventura the protagonists in a train station getting a train to travel to the north you can't actually know where she's traveling to uh, you know she's going to travel to the kingdom number nine uh, but it's not specified what is the kingdom number nine and actually that's kind of the mystery behind of all the story the fact that it's placed in a train station at the beginning it's very important because train stations in literature and arts and culture in general are places where uh, goodbyes and uh, encounters happens and that it's very important that it starts there because it's where uh, Mary Venturio says goodbye to her parents and enters the trains that goes to the north and the fact that it is a train is very important because trains in literature are kind of always a metaphor I mean the book was written like in the 50s or 60s uh, so there wasn't like the same amount of uh, transportation technology we have today uh, but still uh, trains are always a metaphor be on literature uh, because you can pick a lot of transportation methods to make her character go to a place to another but if you pick some specific type of transportation device you kind of mean something by it and trains are actually very important because they always uh, go to a point A to a point B and they never uh, like deviate from the line they from point A to point B it's they always stay on the line in this destination so it kind of represents like the destiny and the path to somewhere uh, because you can't like cross the line you can't you can't like break the rules or do something different with it so it's very important for her to be on a train in this story and also so, uh, trains are in literature where people meet someone usually it's very rare to not meet someone in trains <laughs> uh, so Mary Ventura enters in this train and she meets this woman the woman is described as using a brown coat and a green hat they uh, start going to the kingdom number nine and things start getting weird it starts getting colder and the number nine is very important also because every time the number nine appears somewhere i always think it's like a reference to dante's inferno because in this case also uh, when they are approaching number nine destination it starts to become colder and if you guys don't know dante's inferno the like the hell in dante's description is cold and not hot as we imagined by like the christ christian 
uh, mythology, it starts getting colder and colder and colder. And the thing is that when they are kind of arriving there, uh, Mary Venturi starts questioning the woman in the green uh, hats and brown coats, like, what what is about this nine realm in which they're going to, uh, what what is like there, and that that woman says it's like not a good place, uh, it's not quite uh, a very nice place to be, <laughs> and it kind of represents like the void of dying, uh, it kind of represents like the being forgotten, like disappearing after you die, so that's why the book is so dark and so morbid. The cool thing about this is that Sylvia Plath makes a nice metaphor in which this woman uh, that Mary Ventura meets uh, tells her that who bought the ticket for Mary Ventura to go to the Nine Realm, Nine Kingdom, I'm sorry, uh, was were actually her parents, so it wasn't Mary Ventura who bought the ticket, and that's actually kind of metaphor for life, because you are not the one who actually chooses to live. It is your parents who make the decision to create a life, and you are actually like a victim of it. They kind of put you in, like they buy you a ticket for a train that is the life. It's like a train that is represents life because you start in the in the train station that is the childbirth, and once you start, uh, once you start, like once the childbirth happens, it also starts the beginning of the process of death, which is like where the where the train starts to go to the Nine Realm. So it's a very dark analogy that Sylvia Plath makes and also a thing that happens in the end is that Mary Ventura actually questions this woman like what if I stop in the, like in the seventh realm or in the eighth realm uh, what would happen and she tells her that this is not what actually could happen and Mary Ventura keeps questioning like how is that not a possibility like how is this train not going to stop in the end and that's because like life is not a spectrum life is not uh, life is just life or death there is no in between of these two things uh, so Mary Ventura complains about her like I didn't want to be in this train so this woman actually tells her uh well like your parents bought this ticket for you but you actually entered this train like on your own so i didn't like realize what is the actual meaning of this but like knowing sylvia plath and knowing that like she committed suicide it may be something about suicide like like the self-death being like an option if you are not someone that is into being a living being uh, which is also very morbid if you think about it but it's also very possible because of the writer's story and, but she also like uh, touches a bit like she talks a bit about reincarnation because she, uh, Mary Ventura then thinks about a plan which is like pulling the emergency rope like in the emergency cord of the train jumping up the train and just running off and so that she doesn't die basically then the she asks this woman if this would ha this would work and this woman actually tells her yes this will work and I am going to see you, like, soon. Mary Ventura then, like, follow the steps, follow, like, this path there is in, like, the eighth realm or something. And then she finds herself in a new world, like, she reincarnated or something. And then she finds the woman with the brown coat and the green hat again. So it's like... 
she reincarnated and like there is a whole spirit spiritual thing that says that you kind of pick which ones are going to be your family it, there is like some literature that says that you kind of pick what is what are your parents who are your parents going to be so this may be a reference to it and so the story ends by that but it's very dark very mature story about death uh i love how sylvia Plath narrates time and describes time as the wheels of the train uh always spinning because if you think about it like uh the speed of the wheels turning is always constant and it's like frantic so it's kind of like a nice analogy to time and like to the passage of time in your life because uh, whatever is happening in the train like inside the train the wheels keep turning and turning and I think that's like my favorite point in the book also the part in which they talk about like how your parents are the one who buy you the ticket of the life slash death train and the train just keeps moving forward and you kind of have nothing to do about it it's very profound uh it's very sylvia plath ish and like it's a very good story you should read it uh thanks for watching it that's my analysis of it it's a very metaphorical book uh it's a very good uh short story for her you may read like in 30 minutes maximum it's very 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 good you should read it you should read like a lot of short stories by sylvia plath they are all very good so thank you very much for watching this and goodbye <laughs>